the uses that we have for veterinary bandaging is to stop bleeding. And we want to protect the wound from dirt. Of course, they're standing around in manure and they are in paddocks with dirt in them. And importantly, we want to prevent the wound from drying out. We'll talk more about that in upcoming slides and reduce swelling. We've spoken about cold water hosing, but the pressure of the bandage can also be used to prevent swelling of that, which will also make the wound pull apart more. And we want to keep the wound in the leg from moving in certain situations. So the joint, the carpus moving, will pull any wound and make it split apart, even if it's sewn up together, stitched together. So the rules are to be even more careful. The horse could be in pain, and the horse could be acting in strange ways that you're not anticipating. And so you have to be even more careful than just putting on stall wraps. Plus, you're trying to keep everything clean and sterile as possible in the barn setting without actually having a lot of sterile gear on hand. And it's great if you have an extra pair of hands, phone an extra pair of hands to help you out before the vet arrives. What you want is a clean and protected area to work. I don't know about you, but I wipe off the tack box and three seconds later, there's already an area of dust on it. So a clean and protected area to work could be something like a baking tray that you just put all your stuff in to keep it from getting dirty. You can use the pee pad as a clean surface. And you'll see when the vet arrives and they're laying out their gloves, they open it up and they use it as a sterile field. So this is also something you can jerry-rig to, to have at least a cleaner area for your materials to be sitting on. And you want that clean and protected area for the tools, like I said, but you also want it for the wound. So you don't want to be working where somebody is using the leaf blower to sweep down the aisle or sweeping down the aisle. Or whenever I was working with the vet before I got into school, I'd be yelling at the grooms because they'd be sweeping and we're injecting joints and they're sweeping. And I said, I did use some creative swearing then. Um, <laughs> And then have a list of materials, like your first aid kit. You'll want to have a list of what's in there so that you can replenish it. Have a list of materials and then check them off as you add them to your sterile field to make sure you've got all your gear. Because how frustrating is it when you're crouched down putting on a regular stall wrap and you realize you've got the cotton but you don't actually have the bandage? Even more so when you're trying to work with stuff that's expensive and very clean and then you have to let it drop and go and get the rest of the materials. Clean and fresh bedding in the stall to put the horse in before the vet arrives or cross ties to keep them in, make sure it's a clean area. And the other things you want to have, like I say, clean place to put the tools, I can't stress that enough. Gloves, because we don't want to be introducing dirt to ourselves or the blood from the horse or the whatever, but we also don't want to be contaminating them. I don't want to open this in case anybody has a latex allergy. I just bought these last night. They'll go in the bin if anybody does. Um, paramedic scissors. So these guys are very handy. And you'll want those. These are the blunt ended scissors. See, I can't stab myself. I'm poking myself and I'm not cutting myself. So these are handy for cutting down like that. So you don't inadvertently stab the horse with the scissors. So that's a good thing to have on hand. You want the dressing. This is Telfo. And so that can be used because it's not going to stick to the wound. So if you use gauze, right, it, it's kind of the consistency of cheesecloth. And those little fibers get embedded in the wound. And you want to avoid that because it's going to rip it off and it's going to damage the tissue even further. So that is good to have on hand. Then you want the padding layer. And that is this nice gamgee material or gamage. So it's sheet cotton. You'll see it's also protected by this covering so that the actual cotton padding in the middle doesn't act like the cheesecloth and get stuck in the wound. So that's the padding layer that goes around everything. Oh, the one thing I didn't mention is the conform or cling or roll gauze. And that is this. This can be used to hold the dressing in place. So you put the dressing on and you hold the dressing in place using this and you keep going around and going around until it's all covered up, right? 
and then you put the padding layer over top and the bandage on top of that. So vet rep, you want to unroll just about the entire roll of this and then re-roll it without any tension on it. Because there's nothing worse than trying to apply a bandage and then you're, you're trying to get it unstuck, unstuck, unstuck as you're going because that will apply too much tension on that uh, outer layer of the bandage. And like I said, the bunching up business and too much tension can cause pressure sores. You already have a wound, you don't need to make it worse. Then you can either get elastic tape to wrap around the top, or like most of us will have duct tape around, or masking tape. And then the other thing to hold the bandage up is to put a stall wrap underneath it if it's a carpus, or a knee, or a hawk that you're bandaging. So those are the nonstick pads. That's the first layer of the dressing. Animal Intex. This one is awesome. I'm sure a lot of you have it on hand already. You can cut it to size. And you can even cut it in the shape of a hoof. I see they already sell it in the shape of the hoof. So that can be useful for poultice pads and this. This can be used in place of telfa. It won't stick to the wound, but it is kind of an expensive thing to do for first aid, I would say. It contains boric acid and then this word that I assume is Welsh or something. I don't know. I can't pronounce that. Tragacanth. We won't even try. That is a poultice, so it will draw junk towards the bandage and get it out of the wound. You can use it dry or you can use it wet. You can use it warm water or cool water, depending on the application, and you'll discuss that with your vet. And it has a plastic backing that you keep in place once you place it on the wound. So the, non -plas the plastic side, it goes out. The non-plastic side goes towards the wound. And that helps to keep out external contaminants, and it also helps to keep moisture and heat into that dressing. So the conforming or stretch gauze holds the dressing in place like I was showing earlier. They've got a dressing here, and they're just going to wrap that around and around and around all the way up the leg. And then they put the padding layer over that. So that's what cling or conforming stretch, stretch gauze looks like there with that cheesecloth kind of texture. So padding and absorbing, but there's also cast padding, and that, that comes in a little roll like that, and you can roll that around just like a wrap. Diapers, we already talked about. Diapers are good. They're really absorbent for obvious reasons. We use them for those purposes. And uh, feminine hygiene products, we already talked about those as well. And we've already talked about the pee pad, which is super handy. And yes, the third layer is the bandage. So that is the vet wrap that you want to have unrolled and re-rolled. Or this stuff that's called Covidian, I think, anyway. Or it's similar to Covidian. This one is not as nice, and it's a bit more of a pain to try and unroll and re-roll effectively. And the other thing you can do as the third layer is a spider bandage. The spider bandage is a sheet of fabric and it's about 12 inches long. You go up to the horse with your sheet and you measure around their leg. And this is something you're going to have to do beforehand. You're not doing this in the emergency situation because it won't work out well for you. So you measure about how long it has to be. So about 12 inches from there to there. And what you will do, I think I have a picture of it on the next one. Nope, I don't. Um, you then cut strips into it on either side, and I'll show that in a minute. So with the third layer on the bandage, it's similar to placing the stall wrap. You want enough tension on there to hold everything in place so that the bandage doesn't just slide down. And you want even tension all the way up. And you'll notice yesterday it was a bit of a fib to say that we were able to overlap that bandage layer by 50%. But this is actually where you'll be able to control that and get the 50% overlap with this final layer. I just wanted to say it because it's always something that has to be in the back of your mind. We actually had a video in vet school that all three of us know for sure. And it's this British guy who used to teach there. I don't remember. I don't know if it was Derbyshire or not. But he's in there and he says, and overlapping by 50%. <laughs> so if that sticks in your brain, that's good. 
for any penetrating object, you would just put the donut there and then bandage as best you can around the donut itself to hold that object rigid. So again, if it's a knife, it's not moving around like this and slicing all the muscle underneath it. Additional tools, like I already said, those foam pads that you can use and little blocks of wood. Hockey sticks cut up, probably. And then tape, keeping it all in place. This is a veterinary or a medical type tape. I don't have an example of that, but masking tape, duct tape, those also work for an emergency first aid situation. And these ones are applied with absolutely zero tension. You know, it's tape, especially the duct tape, or um, that is, is rigid, and you can really cause pressure sores with that. So that gets just smoothed around the perimeter of the bandage on the hair and then on the, up, on the top and bottom of the bandage. So no tension there. Like I keep saying, first layer is the dressing. The veterinarian, when you're taking care of the wound later, may or may not want you to use an ointment. There's various types of dressings. Some of them will help pull junk away, like the animal index that's being handed around. Some of them will help actually pull skin off of there, the dead skin and stuff. But they may or may not want you to use ointment. If you're trying to control proud flesh, flamazine on day one, next day, 1% hydrocortisone. And then the conforming gauze, like I keep saying, hold that primary dressing in place. Second layer is the padding. And you want that to be just like the cotton on the stall wrap, smooth without any wrinkles. And the third layer is the vet wrap type material. We've kept going over these points and overlapping by 50%. Uh, not too tight, even pressure the entire length. I keep talking about this because it's so important. And getting back to the leg warmer ideas. If you've ever tried to put a hawk bandage on a horse, they slide off super easily. So they can end up being in this leg warmer situation and then you can end up causing additional wounds to the one you're trying to manage already. Cannon bone is pretty easy if you are just putting a simple bandage that you didn't have to put it up over the knee and down over the fetlock. You can just put the, the dressing, the padding, the vet wrap, and then the tape to hold it all in place. They've used masking tape here. And the hawker knee bandage, how to do that? The same layers, same tension, and tape, again, figure eight around knees and hocks. That's easier to demonstrate out on the dummies. And leave or cut a hole over the point of the hock and on the accessory carpal bone. Pressure swords will ensue if we don't leave those holes. And the alternative is the spider bandage. A figure eight bandage, figure eight bandage, we basically make one pass around the top, more or less, to hold that top layer in place, maybe two passes to really hold it in place. And then you start coming down, make a pass down there, come back up, make another pass around the top, and uh, keep going around in that way. It's not as easy to demonstrate on oneself as I thought it might be. But you just keep making a figure eight. If you've ever learned how to wrap a sprained ankle, it will have that herringbone overlapped nice appearance to it at the end. This is a hawk bandage, and they've done the figure eight. They've got the primary dressing, which they've held in place with this gauze, because otherwise it's really easy to fall off. And then they've put the padding layer on. They've left a hole for the, hawk, the point of the hawk to stick out of. They've put the vet wrap on. I'm not a fan of this. This is quite wrinkly and so on. And then they would put tape here and here to secure that. And they would have put a bandage, a stall wrap down here to hold, help hold that up. On the knee, again, leaving a space for the accessory carpal. They put the entire bandage on. And then they used a scalpel to delicately cut that vet wrap, just to leave a little hole there so that it didn't get a pressure sore. So here's the spider bandage. It's about 12 inches high, and then you cut one inch strips <coughs> along either side, leaving a central area that's still solid. And then what you do on the hawk is on the outside of the hawk, you tie those strips together, and you tuck in the tabs from that tying underneath the successive knot. 
So it, can, it allows the hawk to move. It might be easier than putting on a figure eight. I don't know because I like the figure eight. And, but in your barn, these are very handy wraps to have. And on the knee, it looks like this. You place the bandage and then that goes on the back of the knee and then you would tie it all up along the front and support it again with the stall wrap down there. So they work quite well. Okay, foot bandaging, one of my favorites. Start with uh, the, the telfa or even the animal intex is very good there because it's gonna draw. You'll try and get as much of the gunk and debris out of there first because you don't want to put something wet where you're just going to keep introducing bacteria into that wound. You then put the, you'll use the, the gauze for sure here and then the padding layer and then the vet wrap as the final layer and you just keep going around and around. So animal intex is poultice, cotton wool sheet, um, oh yeah, another thing, using the duct tape, you can make a sheet of it. So you make a square and then you put strips this way and you put strips that way and then you can cut it around in the shape of the hoof and just push it up over the top of the hoof and that adds some extra strength to this because of course their foot will easily wear through this. And then vet wrap over the top. Some people will also put some duct tape over the top of that to add extra strength and some more waterproofing. May place a bandage up the leg as they have here. This looks a little more severe in bandage type, but that was a veterinary clinic in England, I think, that did that. Diapers are a good shape for the foot. The corner of a feed bag also works really well to add some extra strength to this sort of thing. Extra durability. They work really well. It's a nice triangular shape in there. And then <laughs> everybody was aghast over here when I showed the duct tape over the heel bulbs and the coronary band. You don't want that having a lot of pressure over those because they need to flex. They need to be able to flex and move. And if you've got too much pressure on them, it's just like the point of the hawk or the accessory carpal. You'll end up with a nice pressure sore over that that you'll then have to manage as well. So recognizing bandage problems, if you've got any swelling above and below the bandage, that's not normal. There shouldn't be swelling above and below. There could be infection in there. The bandage could just be on too tight. Increased lameness. So they should get better, right? If we're taking proper care of them, they should get better in successive days after the injury has occurred. If they have increased lameness at any point, that's a sign that there's something wrong. There might be a broken bone that hadn't been identified or that the bandage is doing something bad. If they start stomping their foot or chewing at the bandage, then that can also cause problems. If you touch the bandage, it feels wet. If you see exudate coming through it, if you see junk coming through the top layer, that's definitely when you need to change it, call the vet and see what they say to do.